The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You kill people at the uh, at the behest of your superiors. Yeah, that's right, counselor. And the uh, the head of your family is uh, Michael Corleone. Yeah, counselor, Michael Corleone, right. Did you ever get such an order directly from Michael Corleone? No, uh, I never talked to him. Uh, was there always a buffer involved? There's someone in between you and your possible superiors who gave the actual order. Right, yeah, buffer. The family had a lot of buffers. <laughs> well, welcome to Mr. the Savage Chief, Nation. We're watching uh, life imitating art. Uh, her family has a lot of buffers. A lot of buffers. Now, the, uh, the the number one lieutenant of that crime family is, of course, this creep, Sidney Blumenthal. And I'll tell you more about him because you're not going to believe what you have not heard yet today. Many of you don't know who Sidney Blumenthal is. He's an all-around serpent. Sidney Blumenthal is a former failed reporter who went to work for the Clinton hit machine. Sidney Blumenthal worked with media matters to destroy anyone on the conservative side. But worse than that, let's forget that he's just a political operative of the lowest kind. Blumenthal had business plans for Libya post Gaddafi that will blow you off the planet. When you find out what Sidney Blumenthal's private business interests in Libya uh, were to have been, they, these are bombshell revelations by the House Benghazi Committee Chairman Representative Trey Gowdy today. You're not going to believe what those business interests were. And then you have to ask yourself, was Hillary going to benefit from these private business interests? Because I'm going to expose to you what the contracts were, why they killed Gaddafi so suddenly, and what they hope to do after they killed Gaddafi. Now, having said that, I've watched these hearings all morning. And I, I, I uh, tweeted this today. Proves that she has the number one qualification to be president. She can lie with a straight face, can lie better than anyone on the planet, and keep the cat that ate the cream smile. I've never seen anything like this. She's out of communist China. She is such a skilled liar and rhetorician that she's suitable for the presidency of the United States post-Obama. She is perfect for the position. She can lie better than anyone. She doesn't lose her composure, and she is absolutely chilling in her delivery. She's like the Gang of Five under uh, in China, post Mao Zedong. In, in fact, you should know this. Uh, it didn't come up today, and it's an obscure point. The Chinese communists noted five or so years ago that Hillary Clinton was such a skilled liar as a politician, or they called her a deliverer, that they sent members of the Communist Party of China to study her delivery here in the United States of America. I believe you can research that fact and find it. She is right out of the communist playbook. She cannot be moved. And I would ask you today, if you've watched the hearings, I'll give you my opinion, because I've given it already. Here's, this, here's the question for you. Do you think Hillary looks better or worse today? Do you think Hillary is winning or losing today? Because that's all that matters. The truth doesn't matter. The truth is gone. The truth is dead with Ambassador Stevens. We know what she did. We know that she paid no attention to him and the Marines who were guarding him. We know that he was whacked because he was moving weapons from Libya, meaning Gaddafi's stockpile to Syria, to give to the anti-Assad forces. That's not well documented, but it's documented well enough for people to conclude that that's exactly why Stevens was let to die. Now, I have another revelation for you on the show, which you may not have seen during today's hearings which is this. I have the names of all the generals and admirals who were fired by Obama right after the uh, disaster in Benghazi. I have all their names, and I am surprised that they were not called today, because none of them are in the military, to testify that they were ready, willing, and able to send aid and support to save Ambassador Stevens and those CIA and other contractors who were protecting him. They were fired right after Benghazi, and I figured out why. I discussed it in my last book, Stop the Coming Civil War. For those of you who have the book, you can research it. Their names are in there. But I go farther in Government Zero. And I'm not going to talk about the book. I'm going to be talking about Hillary Clinton's capacity for getting away with virtual murder 
and why she will be the most dangerous president of all, far worse than Hillary, far worse than Barack Obama. If you think that Obama is bad and bad as he, wait until you see what she's going to do. This hearing is far more important than you may imagine. This hearing that you are watching or that you're going to hear today because we have a live feed coming out of Westwood One's newsroom anytime we want. And if there's fireworks, we'll play them for you live on the show over the next two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes because the hearings are going on right now as we talk. This is the seminal hearing of the future of America for one reason. If they do not bring her down, if they do not crack her, if they do not bring in a surprise witness that blows these hearings apart, she will be the next president of the United States, is my opinion. It will be the end of this country as you know it. She will do to this country everything you've ever feared. Now, I don't want to go down that road. I want to stick to these Benghazi hearings right now. I want to stick to who Sidney Blumenthal is, the serpent. I want to talk about Sidney Blumenthal's business interests in Libya that underlie these hearings. He was going to make a fortune. And she was smoothing the skids for him to make a fortune which indicates that some of that money was going to flow outside of Sydney's hands somewhere else. I think you can put two and two together. Sidney Blumenthal is one of the worst people in the history of the United States of America. In any other time, he would have been indicted by now. Sidney Blumenthal is a cohort of George Soros. Sidney Blumenthal is a cohort of the Stalinists in Media Matters. I have good evidence, although I cannot prove it, that Sidney Blumenthal's fingerprints are all over my having been banned in Britain in 2009. I cannot prove it. I can only allege it. I'm not going to talk about being banned in Britain. As the only member of the American media who cannot enter Britain, it's Michael Savage, and I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Apparently, they only permit Islamists to enter Britain right now. Only Islamists need apply, or Syrian refugees need apply, but I cannot go there. And it's a shame I can't go to Britain because I did want to go there for my dental work and for their famous cuisine, but I guess I'll have to put that off for a while. But the fact of the matter is there's Hillary Clinton sitting there with a plum, the cat that ate the cream, those cheeks, the surgical cheeks. They only <clears throat> got to her twice today. And I saw this woman, when she was finally having to answer something that she was uncomfortable with, fall apart. You saw the face literally, colla literally collapse in front of your eyes. That... Uh, Communist Chinese assurance that Madame Mao look, that Madame Zhu look, disappeared only once or twice. When she was no longer in control, she went apart. You have to understand something about power. They don't let anyone near them. They let nobody near them. They're insulated by buffers. 30, 40, 50, 100 layers of buffers. Nobody gets near them. This is not Britain where they have to answer the opposition party directly as they do in England once a week, where even the Prime Minister answers the opposition party without uh, a script. We live in a controlled dictatorship in this country, unlike anything you could ever imagine. So these hearings are our only look at a fragment of what democracy might actually look like. And so it's an important hearing because if they don't bring her down, and I don't think they will, she is likely to be the next president of the United States because all the money in the country wants her to be the next president. And I have heard through inside sources that it, that includes the owner of Fox News. That includes all of the minions of Fox News. They are all being told, they've all been told to go soft on Hillary Clinton, go soft on illegal immigration. Do not attack her because she is the chosen one to those who own and run the news corporation of a uh, news corporation. And now you understand why I am blacklisted at Fox News. Yes, I'll make it very personal. I'll inject myself into this discussion, as I have done twice so far in this monologue. Whether you like me or not is almost irrelevant. What's important is that I'm an important member of the American media. Whether you like that or not, it's a fact of reality. I have not survived these 21 years by, in, by not being an important member of the American media. And I can tell you certain things that you don't know, that you should know, that have everything to do with Hillary Clinton's appearance right now. I have new faith in certain congressmen that I never heard of before. Most of them are from the South. They look like real men. They talk like real men. They sound like real men. And they're giving it to her good. Like Mom Pompeo, Republican of Kansas. I wouldn't call that the South, but we'll make him an honorary Southerner just for the sake of discussion. He's not afraid of her. He knows what a rotten piece of work she is. Watch your face when Pompeo works are over. There go the cheeks. 
All the surgery in the world cannot uphold the fake cheeks when Pompeo starts talking. And so these are things that are interesting to watch, humorous to watch, but they're not important. What's important is whether or not she will survive this, and the answer is, I think, resoundingly yes. Now, before I conclude my introduction, I invite you to call the show with your observations. I will say this. If I were running these hearings, I would run it like a, a Hollywood film. And I would, in the afternoon today of these hearings, bring in a surprise witness that would blow the hearing apart. It would bring her down. She'd be finished. And that surprise witness would have a name. I wouldn't say in general. It would be Gener General Carter Ham of the U.S. Army. It would be Rear Admiral Charles Gouet, commander of Carrier Strike Group 3, who was fired by Obama right after Benghazi. It would be Carter Ham, who was the head of the United States African Command during the bloodshed in Benghazi, Libya, when Stevens and others were killed by Muslims. General Ham was extremely critical of, Bar of Barack Obama because Obama would not let him send reinforcements to help the U.S. citizens under attack in Benghazi. He was then fired in April 2013. I have all the names of all the surprise witnesses who I would have brought to testify today as to why they were told or who told them and when they were told not to send reinforcements and who fired them. You're not going to hear any of these men. I believe they don't want to take a walk in Marcy Park. They don't want to wind up floating in a river in Washington. You're watching The Godmother, part one. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. I get the picture. We're watching The Godmother, part one with the wrong music and uh, that's the best we can expect uh, given the times that we are in the godmother is up there you can cut the music it's the wrong cut but that's okay I, we didn't ask for a recital from a junior high school the issue today is who is looking better Hillary Clinton or her interrogators and the answer is clear Madame Zhu is winning Madame Zhu who could easily work for the uh, premier of China China whatever they call them uh, would be very happy in China in her delivery so I think she's perfect for the presidency she can lie better than anybody she can lie under pressure she'll never answer a question directly she won't take responsibility for anything she does and in my opinion she's about as corrupt as they come which are all high qualifications for the office uh, of the presidency again I want to repeat and read the names to you this is very very important write it like a movie director make believe you're a film director the hearings are on the entire future of the American presidency is at stake. You bring in a surprise witness in the afternoon, like in the Godfather movie, like the uh, the brother they brought in from Sicily who blew the hearings apart. You bring in a secret witness. She looks at them, and that's the end of the hearing. Who would that be? That would be the generals or the admiral dismissed by Obama right after Benghazi because they wanted to send help. They were ready to send Marines. They were ready to send air support. And somebody in the White House or the State Department said don't. They were fired immediately. And these names can be found in Government Zero. They were found in Stop the Coming Civil War. General Carter Ham, head of the U.S. African Command. And what's ironic here is that he gave this country 26 years of service, loyal service to, his, to this country, General Carter Ham. And he was fired, even though he was an African-American, by the way. There was not a note of it in the, U the U.S. newspapers. It was a, sh a shocker. Obama also fired Rear Admiral Charles Gouet, U.S. Navy, commander of the Carrier Strike Group 3, deputy commander of U.S. Naval Forces, U.S. Central Command, in charge of aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean Sea the night of the Benghazi assault on September 11, 2012. Did you hear this? What happened? What happened? Why was he fired? Do you know why Obama got rid of this hero? You're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you to show you how corrupt this president is. He was fired for you 